hello and welcome back to my youtube channel and my show grab and rub with king tonto i am super duper excited to take you on a journey of artful deliciously beautifully plated food while i have awesome discussions with beautiful guests from all around the world from all walks of life for those of you who do not know me, my name is King Tonto. They I said what I said, King. Uh huh. I am a mom. I'm a lover of God. I am a humanitarian. I am a big, huge foodie. Oh my God! Right now, a YouTuber. Thank you very much for watching Grab and Rob with King Tonto. So for today's episode, we will be talking about an, a very interesting topic. This topic is dear to my heart and I'm sure dear to a million people's hearts out there too. So if you are a mom, if you are to be mom, a to be parent, whoever you are, but you have an intention to have a child or you do have a child, I think this episode is for you. Sit down, call your family members, call everybody you know, put your pants down so you can jump because I know I'll be learning a lot from this episode. So this episode will be discussing effects of divorce and domestic violence on children. So many times we neglect children a lot. We we tend to put their feelings behind because we feel like they're little beings. But you see, I have a four-year-old son and there is, he is so human than any human that I know. He has feelings, he has emotions, and they are raw, they are fine. And sometimes they might not be able to express it the way that we can understand, but truly and surely they hurt, they, ha they are happy, they feel all of this. They, feel all of these emotions. So we, we tend to put them at the backside when things happen in the family. So this episode is showing more light, showing more light on the neglect that we, we do not see or do we, do not, we don't even recognize that we are affecting the child in some way or the other. So yeah, enough of me talking now. <laughs> My guest today is Mr. Ayatunde Paul Fasanya. I hope I got that right. <laughs> okay, so Mr. Paul is a specialist and a grand finance officer with 10 years experience working experience with the Institution of Human Virology. Wow, in Nigeria, top also a top NGO linked with USAID, CDC, NIAID, NIH, Global Fund, and ETC. His passion for children and youth has inspired him to take international courses in psychology and character building for children, youth at University of Ma Minnesota and you oh my god so I can't even pronounce most of these things you 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 trich at university respectively well trust me he has a whole lot on his feet and truth is I can't even pronounce some of these things here so I would just spare myself all of this and invite Mr. Ayer to come and join me as we eat this beautiful delicacy in front of me. Now, as you can see, we have so many things. We have, hmm, we have tacos, we have burgers, we have fries. <sighs> well, my favorite, we have milkshake. I love to have milkshake with my son, so this is just special special to me so yes we'll be discussing all of this while we munch on this beautifully pleased meal in front of me so please stay tuned it's not going to <laughs> While I was trying to read you all oh, your your everything, I could not pronounce some of the things yeah. I was going to say. 
and it's such a shock that you are so young and it looks like I was reading a 69 year old man's resume or something so yeah. I mean that's that's amazing that's amazing welcome yeah. to my show welcome thank to you. my show thank you Tuntu. yeah so Mr. Ayo you do understand what grub and rub means yeah I, I, I think I do you have an idea everything. right so it's we eat while we have beautiful awesome discussions yeah. okay and today we're discussing about the side effects of violence and neglect on children right yeah. okay so um yeah you can do me the honors and taking yours i will this is you we have milkshake here we have tacos we have burgers more burgers more burgers wow, more burgers more burgers and all tacos so please feel free to indulge okay because i'm i'm a foodie and uh, I, I like to hear learn and eat together that would be awesome so. okay this is amazing yes. first of all and I don't even know where to start from. Um, okay, it seems like you you have a choice Come already. Yeah, I have my choice already. Come closer. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to do something. Come, 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 come. I'm going to do something. I'm just going to trip by. Okay. This is very really serious. I know, right? Food. Is serious business and everybody should treat food as such. Wow. 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 It's fine, I don't mind me. I'm a guy. <laughs> okay. It's okay. I, I'm, a, I'm a big foodie. Okay, so Mr. Ayo, without wasting so much time, could you tell us about yourself? Okay. Please uh, have something to eat. We need to. It's it, grab and wrap. Remember? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I'll just go ahead and introduce myself, yes. and then maybe pick something to eat, just yes. like you. Um. But I can. I must confess that this is all looking scary. <laughs> this is a lot of food. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I would just like to start from the fact that I'm a child development um, specialist. Mm. I work with children and youth. And it's all stemmed from the fact that um, I have a love and calling for children. You know, growing up, uh, I grew up in a neighborhood where, you know, you have a lot of children, you know, where we stay together, you know, we play in the neighborhood. But these days, you know, I have such, um, such, and then you find that loophole that you want to cover in terms of development. So I have a passion for kids. And apart from that, it's a calling from God. Um, I'm much more of a many skilled person. Um, I could play some musical instruments, I could sing, I could do all those things. Um, I'm, I'm artistic also in nature and I could do a couple of sports and you know, I believe that the best way to bring out my giftings is to pass it to a generation who can push it out to the world. And so I believe that you develop a child in a particular way, just like the Bible said, and then the child grows up in that form and then comes out, you know, so the old all work and see a laser like exceptional child. Mm -hmm. I believe in exceptional children and I believe in starting early. So my passion has made me, you know, going through a lot of things, you know, study, you know, courses and all of that. Um, we partnered with the eighth Nas national assembly. We wrote a bill for the establishment of the National Center for Child Development. Um, it just passed in the House, but was not signed by the president yet. And we're still working with the current assembly on that. And I'm also a Yali al alumni, Young African Leader yeah, Initiative and Madela Washington. Yes, yeah, so it's sponsored by the oh, wow. by the U.S. government and the U.S. Department of State. Mm -hmm. And you know we have um, meetings with the. U.S. ambassador to Nigeria, and we official officially I'm one of their fellow, and you know it's it's a big experience for me. I've also graced the stage of World Bank where I talked about um, child development, the African percept perceptive, and then you know let them know what it is to be an African child, and how much you know education can affect development overall. So for me, it's a world of children and bringing out the best of the best in these children and making sure they're exceptional and i believe that every child is specifically designed and pre-wired 
for their God's given assignments, um, no child has the ability to fail. Mm. The failure of the child is either the failure of um, the parent or the teacher. Someone is failing. The child is not designed to fail. I love that. I say the child is not designed to fail. There is no child that is a dummy. If the child has a problem, it starts with the the parent the or parents. the guardian or. So when we call our children, oh, Lodo, 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 <laughs> you keep hitting that word into your child. Please look at yourself in the mirror. Are you an Olodo? Because children are what they see. Yeah. I remember talking about my son making a reaction. Okay. So I'm, I think I'm. Talking. Yeah, please. Oh. Well, I remember my son mean. making a reaction, um, and it, it reminded me of me. And by the time I went back, and I had a reflection like that thing my son did really pissed me off. And the truth is, he only learned it from me. Yeah. So if it pissed me off, that means other people must have been pissed off because of this same thing because I'm aware that I do that same thing. Yeah. But I just never knew, I've never been on the receiving end. So my son gave it to me, so I'm like, you know what, these children just watch you and they just replicate everything you, know, in, in, that you say, do, or are. Yeah. Mm. In child psychology, it's called mirror neurons. Mirror neurons. It means, um, mm. you know, the way they see you, it's, they mirror you mm. to act themselves. Mm. Um, when you see any child, the way they turn out, all of that, their attitude and all of that, it's majorly three factors that determine that. One is the DNA which is the X and Y chromosome of a parent. So most time parents shout on children, I'm like, you need to go to the front of the mirror, check yourself, have a good look, and then you, you can tell if you're not the one that passed this to the child, because it's your yeah. DNA That's at the true. end of the day. And secondly, is individual factors, and third is the environment. Mm. The environment has a lot of That's part to play in our child. Actually. So if you look at all those Please factors, repeat that again while talking to the camera. The environment has a lot of facts to play in the development of the child. Thank you very it's much. It's key. In fact, there's a development system theory psychologist, um, his name is Gottlieb. He believed that the quality of environment the child has can determine the future of the child. Of the recent, quality of what? Of the environment that the child interacts with can determine the future of the child. The quality of environment that the child interacts with can determine the quality. Can determine the, the, um, the future of the child. Can determine the future of the child. Yeah. It just simply means that the environment in which I grow, I grew in has an influence to my future. Yes. That's yes. simply what it yes. is. Yes. Yes. Wow. Of recent, there's a study from Harvard Center for Developing Child that, did, that discovered that, you know, environments now have a way of, sh of um, shaping the DNA. The DNA is, you know, your signature as a person. Yeah. But they discover that over time with interaction with your environment, it changes the way your DNA is structured. It's amazing, amazing discovery. And, you know, we need to start working on our environment and ensuring we get the best out of it for our kids. Wow. I wanted to ask you the second, my second question, but I mean, all of the passion that you use in saying, demonstrating, talking about your love for children, I, I don't think that question goes again. I just want to say why um, child psychology. But, I mean, it's obvious that you have the passion for it. Yeah, it's not just so something too. that you're making money from. Yeah. It's something that you are truly passionate about. Yeah. And um, Mr. Aya has actually worked with my son before, and I can tell you that my result was 100% amazing. You have issues or you don't see a recurring issue or recurring pattern in your child, especially with divorced families or families that go through a lot of domestic violence. Yeah. You may sit home and deny that it does not happen, but I'm telling you as a woman, as a mother, as a true African mother, it happens and it can happen to as little as a 10 year old 10 months old baby yeah. i mean i had my mother die when i was so young yeah. and i put the blame on this woman till i was almost 28 yeah. i was simply blaming her like why did it why was she not strong enough to leave can you imagine how my yeah. child, I, I had that mentality as a child i was angry with my late mother till i was maybe 28 that's when I sat down and realized that 
you don't have control over a lot of things and yeah. that made me i was like you know what? i don't even want to be a mother because i am not even sure if i'm going to stay to be able to take my i could leave the way my yeah. mother left and I'll, I'll my son my son will be angry you know that actually messed up my head and i did not take care of it at that time we didn't know what child psychology was but if i have help I would have grown up to be a much happier person. Of course, I'm happy today. I yeah. mean, I'm happy. I grew up to be a happy person. I grew up to face a, a, um, to face myself and be who I am. But it would have been so much easier if I was worked on as a child. Yeah. Or if my family even recognized the fact that I was not happy. You know, it would have been so much easier. Yeah, you were talking about your childhood. And one of the traits I noticed is that, you know, there's a saying in child psychology that says that the abuser is first abused so most of the of the people that you see as abusers yeah they were first abused in fact statistics yeah. reveals to us that about one third of people who are abused as child as children they grow up to be to become abusers of people in other forms you know they could manifest so it's very important that we understand that you know the way we react to abuse is different in various formats in your own case you held on to it a while and then when you when you came over it you started reacting in you started reacting through love because one of the ways to at least defeat abuse is to now look at love now every time i look at your page and i see all the giving and all the outreaches and all the all the help that you render to the to the needy people i'm looking at a breakout you're breaking deliberately breaking a cycle a cycle which is supposed to run from the way you received love as a child to the way you give love as a mother which in, in turn will tell on your son on how love is, re is revealed to him so it's amazing how much you've been you're such a resilient person on how you've been able to turn this around and you're doing this also for the next generation which is your son in this case and you're ensuring that this cycle ends with you which is amazing and i just want to appreciate you for that because it takes a lot most people who are abused they always live in denial one of the first way in which you know any abused person they will tell you no it's 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 i wasn't abused if you see people who were eat when they were small and you ask them say ah, why you were being eat what did you did you think it was an abuse they say no uh, I was a very stubborn child. I was a very wicked child. That's why they, I was always beaten when I was young. But it's 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 physical abuse, and it, it goes along to manifest in other areas that the person is unsuspecting. So thank you once again mm -hmm. for taking that line for <laughs> building resilience mm -hmm. to be able to come out of that and chart a course for your child. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Now, do you think that um, children, I mean, knowing that the fact that divorce, um, domestic violence affect children, and do you, so do you think that children should be taught or educated on what domestic violence is? Yes, very, very important. Very, very important. Um, one of the things you need to understand is, is just that in this part of and the if, world... If yes, okay, how? Okay. Who is to teach them? Really? Okay. Um, are they to learn these things in school? Are they to learn these things at home? Are they to learn these things through the person who is abusing them? Because oh no, sorry, the person who is the, the person who is the abuser or the person who is receiving the abuse. Because I feel like wh wherever it's coming from, it's it's it depends because it might be very dangerous. Just before we filmed this, I watched a documentary about a, a, a father. A family, rather. This man humiliates, beats up his wife. She, they're actually um, Americans, a black American, and the wife is white. Beats the wives, beats the wife to a pulp, and have the son record this abuse. The son was actually recording him wow. hit the mother, and the son kept saying, "You know what? You know what, Daddy? I think she wants you to go to jail. I think she's trying to put you to jail. I think she's trying to make you go to jail." He is in support of this thing, and the boy is just 13 years old. So that's my 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 question now is in two parts. Okay, should children be educated about domestic violence and um, divorce? Should they? Should they 
they be talked about with them? And if yes, who should do this? Wow. So it's a what you what question you just asked is very broad. It's a very big but one. But I'll try to break it down as much as possible. Um, the first thing is in the case you're talking about a 13 year old boy, um, 13 year old is a lot of years, and I I can tell that he's been there's been a track you record. I will I will. There's been a track record of this abuse. In fact, oh, wow. the way it works is at at age five to seven, which is sensitivity age. Most of this abuse, if it happened at that age, gets to be recorded in the brain. Mm. Over time, what the brain does is to insulate this concept that, okay, what is being done is the right way of life. Okay. It becomes a normal, normality for the child that, okay, it's, it's okay, it's just every other person trying to um, do something else from the right thing. That abuse becomes, in their mind, it, the brain does a myelination. What it does, it, it insulates that thought pattern in the head of the child and says that when you're, when you're slapped or when you're beaten, it's the normal way. So when the child embraces a, a form of normalcy for abuse at that age, already he has the tendency to become an abuser. So when he's 13 and the father is, you know, they used to, probably the mom has even fought back a couple of times. The child already is hurting his brain the water, as a, an abuser. Mm -hmm. So you need to understand that this, this is beyond, is beyond comprehension for, uh, for children to be like that. That's why, one of the reasons why the American welfare system, uh, they've taken it, They've turned it up a heavy notch, like in terms of child welfare. The, if a child should make a small complaint, there's going to be an arrest. There's going to be an intervention because they believe that children, while their brain, brain is still malleable, we should, take, we should take the experiences we give to them and make them positive experiences, not negative experiences. So in the years, if they see your child in neglect, maybe in a park or something, the child welfare service can just come and take your child and you will have to go through all kind of cases all kind of um, assessment before they can release the child to you yeah so they ensure that in school that they, they run through that exercise unfortunately in this part of the world we don't have such um, strict measures children children get abused every day and then this gets formed up and they grew up with that thought pattern and uh, unfortunately since the government is not there it leaves the work for a partnership between the parents and the teachers because the interaction of a child's development system story starts from the micro family the micro family which is the true child and the brothers and the family so in that case in that case the father the father or mother whichever um, case is not in the abuse has to step in to try and create a mindset, a, a different mindset to, to carve a pathway outside of the abuse. So it's very key. And how does abuse, how does it start? The factors that determine whether an, an abused child will become an abuser. Abuse. Number one, it starts early. If the earlier the abuse starts, the more possibility that the child will become an abuser. Number two, the duration of the abuse. Yes. So, mm. if you abuse a child once, the brain doesn't record it immediately. But once you do it seven times, what the brain does is to insulate that thought pattern in the mind of a child mm. and say, "This is the way. This is the way you should live. Mm. Abuse. This is the right way." Mm. So you know, over time, you know, the child holds on to it. Another another way you can know is you know how close is the person who is the abuser. If the person who is the abuser is the mother or the father, it's always very difficult for mm. a child to break away because they have something to hold on to. So, yeah. They blame themselves constantly. They, they put themselves in denial. They can't tell anyone. When you ask such people of such cases, they don't say anything. They don't say They tell you everything is okay, but they exhibit those traits. They come out to be abusers. In fact, some of them have multiple personalities because they are trying to hide the pain yeah, yeah. inside of them. So the work is cut out for schools, it's cut out for the parents if, the, if they're available as partnership to do that. Because here, I can tell you that we don't really have um, that Structure. robust child yeah. um, services yeah. that will take care of the child yeah. for you. So it's leave the work 
for the parents and teachers. in fact okay. from the micro system mm -hmm. to the meso system the way it's supposed to work is that in development system theory there are five five levels first is the family second is the school third is the community fourth is the government and fifth is the timing of every event now we didn't used to have we don't have government but when we were growing up we used to have community communities yeah. a lot of us grew up with the our community. communities being able to raise up but now in this part of the world now it's been taking one step down now parents are more they are more they, they, they shield their children more so that community-based approach doesn't really factor in again which leaves just the school and the family mm. so the work is cut out for the family is cut out for the teachers and you know the more we emphasize on this and the, the kind of show like this is going to orientate people the more people will look into this more and say okay i want to take a step, step to secure yeah. the future of my child i want to be proactive i want to ask questions i want to be direct mm -hmm. with my child i want to make sure i shield my child you know and then i want to seek help if i need one because a lot of us don't know we need, we need help, help yes for the child mm -hmm. in this part of the world so mm -hmm. those are factors that we all need to look at and if we do if we go the long way we can i mean the strong one of the strongest they did a um a study at vanderbilt university and they discovered that one of the strongest predicative factors of a child abuser is that is is not even the ones we look at which is sexual uh which is um ne uh, neglect and all of those they look at the major factor is that a child being feeling unloved and unwanted that is even more powerful than all these other abuse yeah. A child who feels like Emotionally, nobody needs me and all of that. Yeah. So how do we cure? You know, you, you you take yourself as a case study. You pour in a lot into that barrel, and you mix it with the ingredient, and the child comes out up. So it's amazing how the work is. It's a, it's going to be a lot of work on the part of the parent, on the part of the teacher. But once we understand that there is work to be done, and we get to the work, there is always a way out of yeah. it. I was going to say, I was going to ask you that do you think that enough information reaches the children about domestic violence and divorce? But the truth is that who am I kidding? It doesn't. Um, in this part of the world, we, we tend to see women who say, you know, I'm suffering a lot of div um, domestic violence in my home. Yeah. I'm suffering a lot of violence in my home, emotional, physical, mentally, it could be anything. Yeah. But the only reason that they feel like it is okay for them to stay is because of their children. And to me, I just I just don't understand why anybody would use that as an excuse. You want to stay in a bad marriage, or you want to stay in a divorce, or no, in a in a bad environment for your children, like domestic violence. Okay, you want to stay in domestic violence because you want your children to have a family. But in that essence, you are actually grooming more abusers yeah. because your children will grow up and say it's okay daddy did it to mommy mommy yeah. did. and it's not only daddy do it to mommy it's mommy did it to mom and daddy because we have female abusers so the, your children will grow up to think it is okay it is okay and that is the worst thing you can ever do to a child if you love your child i mean staying in a marriage shouldn't be a selfish decision yeah. that oh you know what the society is gonna laugh at me or you know what my, my peer people are gonna laugh at me you know what oh i've invested so much you've invested so much in your marriage yes no doubt but if you keep staying in that marriage that is abusive or that relation that's abusive and you die it's one of two things they will bury you and move on. They would not bury you, neglect you, your family will bury you, and they would have someone else take care of your child. Another woman, which is something that you always do not want. So I don't understand why African women do that a lot. I won't just limit it to African women because I see a lot of even Western women yeah. do that. Say, I'm staying in because of my child. I think, for me, I think that's the worst thing you can ever do to a child. If you love your child so much, it is to approach your child from a negative environment. Yeah. And I'm, I, I am, an, I'm not going to say I'm anti-divorce. I don't encourage, say, divorce, divorce. I always feel like, you know, something can be done. And I'm one to say, you know what, something might be done, you know, we can work on this. But working on it doesn't mean keeping quiet, working on it doesn't mean staying subdued and letting your children watch this and understanding that this is life. I have, I had a case last year 
I had the case okay. last year, 2019, and it was an, about an abuser, and um, he abused his wife. And the, I worked with um, Naptip, and yeah. Naptip took him, and I got to sign, somehow get to talk to him. And he, he, he told me that this is a pattern, that this is how he knows love. And I broke down and I cried hysterically just hearing him talk. He told me his two things that broke me down. He said, this is the only kind of love I know. This is the only kind of pattern that I've ever seen. It's a generational thing. My mother hit my, my father hit my mother. She never left. My, it was, he kept, you know, he kept, so it's, it's something that is a pattern with Africans or is a pattern with humans. I do not understand, but the it's, truth it, is, it's, it's not just keeping the, children in the yeah. environment is super toxic. It's more toxic than what you even receive or feel, I think. I see it as much of an emotional attachment to pain, an insecure, insecure to attachment. Pain? Um, there's a stigma with you know families, you know, in Africa, and we always perceive it that way. And then we always say, you know, we're doing it for the child and all of that because, okay, this is a situation. You wonder the environment is, we've this, we've talked about um, plays a major part in the life of a child and all of that. Yes, the father is the part. Of the environment but would you risk to have the to have the father in and have the child go through the, the abuse and domestic and violence and all of that and take the, will you risk that or rather have the child without the father and as a sane mind because the truth of the matter is with enough love or from the from the part of the family yeah. and support from the part of the mother you can always redirect the energy mm -hmm. But if you're working out, so please work the position out without the child involved. The child is specifically designed. They, a child who's given birth to tabula rasa, it means a clean slate. Okay, cool. It means a clean slate. Tabula. Tabula rasa. Tabula rasa. What's that, Hebrew? No, it's, um, it's, um, it's a term developed by Sigmund Freud and Field, the first um, psychologist. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, I, I won't talk about no, it. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right, so it's it's tabula rasa, it's a clean slate. So it's what you put into it that you get is garbage in, garbage, garbage out. out. Okay. So you have that in, you have that out. You you have rich environment. You expose the child to music, to judo, to this. To it brings out the quality of experiences. You see a well-rounded child with quality. A child, I mean, it's okay. We over. There, there are some things that we we overrate and there's some that we underrate okay you overrate the position of a father what of in case of death won't you have won't you have a position to make won't the family have to make a position yes they will have to make a position on how to bring up the child but in that case in the case of abuse it is a direct premeditated approach to break down the development of the child you don't want to risk that and say okay you're taking your you're embracing the abuse because of the child and the child's future is is taken at the truth of the matter is when the child grows up even the bible says train up a child on the way it should go. go and when he is old it will not depart That's so him. even if you train up a child in abuse when he is old it's abuse it will not depart from abuse yeah. it's the same abuse it's they true. will exhibit and you know at the end of the day it can bring your name to shame it can bring you can all the all the things that you're embracing while you were young everything will come out mm. into the open and you'll be broken and and you'll be more angry and you'll be you know your life will be more frustrated yeah because frustrated you, should you should have taken now. a decision, decision when you had the chance you should have saved yourself all the trauma you just saved yourself all the violence you should have taken decisive steps mm. to ensure that this there's a solution to this you could have reported to the authorities you could have done all of that you didn't have to go through all that for your child to also go through all what it will go through True. you're putting the child at risk True. we all need to take a position to this okay and that's the only way we can move forward and have better children who we'll come out to be leaders of tomorrow? Okay, we've been talking about domestic violence, domestic okay. violence, domestic violence, but um, there's an angle, divorce, okay? Yeah. Now, the effect of divorce on children. Now, do you think that divorce has an effect on children? I, I know the answer to that, but I just want you to break it down for us. What are the effects? How do you, how do you realize that a child is sad due to a divorce? 
Now, do you think that parents of uh, parents that are divorced should be able to sit their children down and tell their children that you know what, mommy and daddy, we're not good anymore, but we're still mommy and daddy. We love you. We do this. This is what divorce is. I'm not gonna be living with you because sometimes in, in Africa, especially where like Nigeria, yeah, your father just stand up on the house and your daddy not come back again. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's that that's not the come back again. That like, mommy don't come, mommy don't go. You, you, that's just what we hear. You know, nobody really explains to us. And for me, I feel like divorce just has like as much bad pecs as much as uh, uh, domestic violence because sometimes these children grow up thinking, oh my my father did, doesn't love me, you know, or oh my mother walked away from me. Meanwhile, the truth is that there was no compatibility in love and you know yeah. being together anymore and they had to leave but this way we never just live amicably to a point where we sit our children down and tell them this is what is happening i'm not gonna say i'm perfect i'm not exactly perfect but i just believe that that's how life should be you know given the right circumstances we underestimate the power of the mind of a child one thing that we don't undo it, we still see them as children. Okay. Most times, the sensitivity age has already started and built up from age three years, four, um, four years old. The power of the mind of a child when it's five years old is higher in terms of cognitive development than a 13 year old. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, in the US, um, most of their organization recruits their, um, their staff from when they are five years old, six years old, seven years old. Because that's the age that should, truly shows their cognitive development capacity. So they do that and help them build up. And we in Africa of all Nigeria in this part of the world, we just see them as children. They are much more than that. Mm. They desire they demand they, they desire from us that we explain things out to them. Most time they do like they understand. Like, okay, no problem. Like, they don't understand what you're saying. Like, oh, I understand why you're doing what you're doing. Mm. But deep down, they're wondering, do you realize That's that the... this affects me? Yeah. I think, I think you're right. I, I think you're right. Because, like I said, I have, I have a four-year-old son, and I see all of this. I Sometimes I want to take it for granted, but his reaction just, like, no, I'm, I'm human. And, like, I have a right to. And I, I really appreciate that my son as an outspoken person because sometimes as, as a parent you might not be able to fully understand their emotions but because he's outspoken, I'm, sorry I'm deviating, but yeah. Yeah, 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 so it's, it's very important that you understand that your child is not just the child, mm. you're not just a child there and you need to take um, the right step, you needed to understand that the mind of a child is so powerful so mm. Let's look at a scenario when, where a father and a mother wants to... Now, this family is no longer a family of husband and wife. There are parties to this family, which is husband, wife and child. So, if this is going to integrate and it's going to change the living style of everyone, it's going to change the living style of the father, mother and child. So, why do... Father and mother just take the decision without factoring the opinion of the child. Nobody's even asking you to factor the opinion of the mm -hmm. child. But you need to give an explanation. You need to be real with the child. That way the child will not seep into a denial corner. Mm -hmm. The child understands. And then you need to do it with, with absolute love for the child. Now, whatever happens between the father and the mo mother has to stay between mm -hmm. the father and the mother and all of that. But when it comes to the child... It has to be in absolute love. I love you as your father. I love you as your mother. These are steps you are taking to get to a resolution. When I mean resolution, it could mean separation. So, or it could mean we are coming back. But these are the steps right now that we are taking towards resolving this issue. So, as we are resolving this issue, this is where you stand. So, child, your mom is staying. Is going to be staying with you. I will have, I will visit occasionally. When I need to be there in school, I will be there. When I need to, you know, it's, it's, it's an agreement. Don't, we tend to shift the blame on the child and put the pressure on that child by saying that, okay, since we are divorcing, you will take charge of the child. 
and it always affects that way one person now carries the body and trying to play both roles and it's a lot of pressure having a child on with two parents is already a lot of pressure now talk about having one person raise the child it's crazy i can tell you that for free it's, it's, it's crazy. crazy so i mean you want to do your bit you don't want to say no matter what your responsibility to your child does not change it does not waver for mm -hmm. any reason you still owe it to that child to do what you're supposed to do you owe the child to still ensure that you are a father in his life yeah. even if your wife marries Marry another another husband. Even father. if you marry another wife, you still need to father the child, which is your own seed. Yeah. You need to do that. So that way the child understands that I have my own parents and I am not I'm not feeling unwanted mm -hmm. or unloved. Love. I'm not feeling like I'm a I'm a mistake of two people that don't understand themselves. Like I told you, the study at Vander Beach University shows that the the, the, the strongest predicative factor of, of of abusive children that turn out to be abusive when they are grown up is children that feel unloved or unwanted. But be that as we've said all of this, it's very important to clearly state also that we can always help children to come out of these okay. cases. If and when. If and when we decide to. Okay. Once we take the, the right steps and we know that, oh, this is a child who's gone through um, separation of parent we help the child build resilience I think, I, for me i think it's hard enough for a, a loving f family that has understanding to have a divorce yeah. and the children understand it is hard for them not talk more of when you know it's a bad one yeah. it's messy absolutely and it's, it's no remorse or no apologies or no explanation i think that it's even even worse than that so yes i agree with you students should so what, what, what there's, there's need for a lot of love yeah a lot of love have to be thrown into the mix yeah. once you start to see that the child is withdrawn because the child will give you symptoms you will see signs, see signs everywhere too. you will see if the child is not asking a lot of questions a four-year-old five-year-old you need to be suspecting the child a five-year-old they talk they ask it's about bad. everything so, so i mean so when you when you see that oh you know that, okay i'm doing a good job i'm trying to meet this i'm trying to meet that but you know when you have a child who is withdrawn you see very simple aggressive it shows a little bit of anger at everything then you need that you need to to pause and take your reset i probably see a child development psychologist or take assessment that helps to know the level of development of a child even a child can be doing well at school but still have, still have development breakdowns so you need to check all of those and then come to a conclusion that i need to take steps to sort this out for the sake of the child so we should not be selfish in the way we view the child and say okay this is my position this is we, we just need to do the best for the child mm -hmm. and just like the strongest predicative factor is on loving children when we pour a love into the mix, mix it changes that dy mm -hmm. dynamics and then it, it helps the child to grow up in the proper structure it may not grow up exactly the way it is but it will grow up full of love and f with open arms, knowing that the world is a good place, place to be. Yeah. He won't be aggressive with other yeah. children. He won't be jealous of other children that have parents. parents he sure. understands fully what is happening. Sure. He understands that his, his father is not dead. He understands that his father loves him. It's, it's just that the father and the mother are not together. together. Yeah. I think you're right. I, I, I strongly think you're right. Now, okay. Do you think that social media contribute i do understand that divorce and um, domestic violence is hard enough on children on their own as it is but when people get to be aware of this of these children's circumstances or situations and um, they go as far as being mocked on social media do you think the healing process is is um what would i say do you do you think the healing process will come um rapidly or do you think that it would actually spiral them into more heartbreak more regrets more depression and sometimes even suicide because social media has been known to bully a lot and i mean who's not to say they'll say oh you know what uh your, your father does not want you your father ran away from home or your father used to beat your mother a lot and yeah we saw it on the news and that 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 your father you know 
you know, people can say horrible things to these children. And I, for one, I, I, I do not know how I'm going to let my son go to the internet without me being there when he's not of age. You know, I, I'm just talking as my own, as a mom of my own. But I do know that there are some children who actually go on the internet and say 13, I had 13, 14. You know, from 13, 14, they start going on the internet themselves and they get to receive this negativity or, or this swamp of negative bullies come at them like that. So how, how do you think a child in that situation would heal even though he or she is being counseled? Say for instance, he or she has good counseling, but counseling and constant bully online. How do you think that could marry? Because in this day and age, while we are talking about our children in the physical, we also have to talk about yeah. about them in the digital world. Because as much as they are leaving footprints in the physical world, our kids and ourselves, yeah. we are actually leaving the biggest footprint on the digital yeah. web. So, so it's something that we cannot yeah. deny. Sorry, excuse me. Yeah, sorry. Right. Social media is a no for me. Personally, I don't... Um, I don't agree that you know we go online and you know try to put content to because we are angry with our spouse and all of that. The truth is most of the things on social media are saved on the cloud, and you know people can easily screen grab yeah, it. Some people can yeah. do that, and they are always on record. Now there's something that you know what you don't know about cannot hurt you. Mm -hmm. Now if you explain if you've been open to the child in the first place and you've explained what happened. Then why you need to go to social media for the bullying? Because at the end of the day, what happens is that you are not the one who will be there. We can say that you can shield the child and allow him not to go to it. But he's going to go on internet, whether he like it or not. Sure. The internet is, is like, you can't compete with screens. Mm -mm. You can't compete with screens, you can't compete with PS4, you can't all you my can't four year old sons ask me for PS4. You I don't know how you heard the word PS4. Yeah, you can't compete with those things. So when you can't compete, the best way is to engage them. them. To engage them. All social media will do is to distract the child from his core development. That's true. He's supposed to go on a path, develop in a path. But social media does what? Oops. At every point in time that in time that he gets to see any news in relation to that, it's like a setback to his development. Mm. Even if he has a counselor, the counselor is going to have a lot of work cut out. It's going to be more intense work. You know, it's going to be be tendency to be more forceful to complain about the child's irrational behaviors, and it's not justified you because you can't trace it. You cannot see the build up from the social media even. Even there will be subtle remarks, maybe as a child begins to develop into higher grades and all of that. You know, children, other children are going to be, there will be remarks from yeah, other parents, parents and all of that yeah. who know about the whole story and then, you know, from there it filters down to their own children and then it filters down oh, to sure. human beings. We are very, you know, when it, when it comes to information, we thrive on information. Sure, so yeah. they will be shocked at some people just waiting that, oh, the day they come for their pity and they discover that one of the parents are in the school. They say, oh, if you see that parent, we know about their story. They tell the children, and before you know, it filters down to the child. And the child, not being able to confront this, has to deal with this with its, um, internally. So, yeah. He deals with it to a point when it becomes a, a denial. Yeah. And then he tries to be aggressive mm -hmm. in trying to defend it. Do you want your child to, go to be the one to, to defend the decision that two adults Those, yeah. took? Yeah. It's a it's a no no for me. It's yeah. a no no. I mean, there's already damage in terms of the separation and that we should pay attention to trying to ensure that the damage doesn't have it's a long like lasting effect. Cut it yeah. and close the cycle so that the child can grow up the way it's supposed to grow. Thank you very much. I um you see me, I'm down like uh, like that. <laughs> Even they, they caught you on your own trap like uh, like that. So you know, I, I've got to learn a lot from this. I um, I, you know, we always wish we did things better. But the thing is that we all have life, and once there's life, things can be done better. So I have learned a lot from this, and I hope that you learned a lot too. Children have emotions. They are not just thing they're not just small children or small or they're not small children but they're not just little human beings with no feelings they are actually 
full-blown humans with full-blown feelings and yeah. every decision you take in your life will affect your child one way or the other be it divorce be it domestic violence it will affect your child together one of the ways that one of the things we talked about today was actually divorced parents coming together and telling the children what divorce is and amicably explaining to them in a loving way and yeah. second one is the fact that domestic violence no matter how long we pretend it actually tells on our children it just affects the children if it doesn't break them mentally it breaks them emotionally if yeah. it doesn't break them emotionally it turns them to be the predator themselves it turns them to be the abusers themselves you see ch children like a, a, a father beating a, a mother the son is there the son gets married in future yeah. the son beats his uh, his wife the wife gives birth you know it's just become a pattern of life and you can never tell you really can never tell one of these days just a push and someone is dead and yeah. your whole life just goes down the drain because of what you know i i, I always say it i'm not a pusher of divorce <laughs> I'm a preacher of love, but I'm a war. <laughs> I'm an Intaboski. <laughs> so yeah, uh, well, I hope you learned a lot from this. I did learn a lot. Thank you very much, Mr. Ayo. Always do understand your children matter. They put them first. Um, there is something called child counseling. There's something called child psychologist. You can always find Mr. Ayo. Please leave your handle with them so they can find you and talk to you. I mean, it's not just some um, divorce yeah. and domestic violence. It could be your child is late learning in school. Yeah. There are some children who just learn slower than some children. And that doesn't mean that they are dummies or they are different from other children. Yeah. It is just the learning process and the... You know the the I think something is in the it has it's, it's a brain the block. Yeah, it's a development the system, and there's nothing actually wrong with any child. So please do contact him, or if not him, contact any child psychology for anything at all, anything. Like I told you about my story about being an angry child, and I wasn't angry because I had a father beating a mother. No, my father never did that. I well, I never saw that, but I was angry because my mother never grew up with me because she died. And the anger was just so baseless, so stupid. But yeah. as a child, being mocked at the school, see people, the trauma people yeah, see people's that. mothers come to school for PTA meetings and all of that. And I was in boarding school and I was staying in school for two months. No mother come to see me. You know, it was just so traumatized. And I think I just took all that anger, all that hatred, all that bully, and just built it up in a big ball of disgust for my mom because she died. And yeah. it was just senseless. It was just senseless. And I lived through life being this angry child until yeah. I was 28. And today I'm 25, 20, today I'm 35, I'm 25 years old. So you can imagine how long I suffered if I just had help, if I just had help. So thank you very much for watching another episode of Bob and Bob and King Tonto.